Hi, welcome to Grade 11 Physics at White Oaks Secondary School. We're going to be doing a lot of video lessons in this course, so I thought the appropriate way to start would be to have a first video lesson on how to handle video lessons. <clears throat> We're also going to tackle the problem solving template that I will introduce to you or have already introduced to you and will model throughout the course of the semester. Now, a couple of things before we get started on this. Please make sure that you have downloaded and read the video note taking handout or if I've handed it out in class, have read through it and are prepared on that. The second thing I ask that you do is before you start watching this video, try the hard problem on the day one problem solving handout, the question about uh, Schrodinger's chicken. So if you haven't done all that stuff right already, pause the video now. If you have, be ready with that problem solving handout. If you have the answer, awesome. If you don't, no worries. We'll get there together. <clears throat> First thing. Here's the problem. And what I ask you to do when you're solving video lessons is step one, pause the video. As soon as, it, when I introduce problems in the, the, the video lessons, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and check to make sure you take a crack at it first. Try to make sure, try to uh, solve it in any way you can, preferably using the seven step method that we're going to work here, but whatever it takes to do it. Once you've solved it or tried and, and not managed to get there, then you can restart the video or continue the video from where you paused it and watch to see what I, what I did. If what you did matches what I did and you got it right, then you can move on. If what you did does not match what I did, then you have to go back and correct. You have to make sure that you are following the method that I'm showing, especially if your method doesn't get the right answer. If your method does get the right answer, there's no problem with playing it through but coming in and checking with me because sometimes a method that gets you the right answer might not get you the right answer every time. So keep that stuff in mind. <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to ask you to pause several times and try to solve things out yourself. So the question is, a chicken runs at a constant speed of 4 meters per second. A cat starts in the same place at the same time, but it starts with a speed of zero and accelerates constantly at 1 meter per second squared, which means each second it goes 1 meter per second faster than it was going the second before. So they both leave the same place at the same time. The chicken is presumably going to move ahead at first, but then the cat is going to catch up <clears throat> as it gets faster. So here are a couple of things we can do. First thing, um, I'm just sampling or giving an example of a first try at this, and that is we assume that it's three seconds. So sometimes you can just make an assumption, try things and see if it works. There's nothing wrong with making an assumption, but you have to do the math afterwards to prove that your assumption works. So if we assume three seconds, the chicken travels four meters per second. So four meters for each second times three seconds gives you 12 meters. The chicken goes 12 meters in three seconds. The cat accelerates to a maximum speed of three meters per second in three seconds because each second it gets one second, one meter per second faster. So the cat travels one to three meters in three seconds. That gives uh, a three meter distance for the cat and then in four seconds the chicken will have gone 16 meters and the cat four. Five seconds, the chicken's gone 20 and the cat five. We're not coming together here. And that's a problem because uh, the, the question implies that they will reach the same place at the same time. So I've made a bad assumption here. Here's my first challenge for you. <clears throat> Excuse me, pause the video and see if you can figure out what I'm doing wrong here. Okay, to review the first steps in the problem solving method I would prefer that you use every single time. First one is to find the target. <clears throat> find the target means we decide what we're trying to solve for. Well, if we look at this question here, the question is actually how far will the chicken get before the cat catches her? Okay, so there's our target. First thing in any problem, always define what the target is. Always figure out what your answer is going to look like. So we're solving for the distance the chicken has gone, and I wrote, I've written that here. The distance the chicken has gone, a blank space for the number of meters and the units here, because we will always answer distances in meters unless otherwise specified. 
And I also put something down here about significant digits. We will be talking more about significant digits later in another video. For now, just understand that the way the problem is presented, you're expecting to give two significant digits. When you're writing down the target, write down everything you know the target's going to have in it or, or everything you need to know about the target. That prevents you for, for, from forgetting after you've blown your brain trying to solve it. So step two, draw and get the concept. This is a pretty straightforward picture, but there are a couple of things that you need to sort of catch when you draw this. First, they start at the same place. And at the same time. So we have the chicken, we have the cat. The chicken goes at four meters per second. And the cat starts, let's call that V. We can just call it V if we want, V C for chicken, although cat and chicken kind of makes that awkward. Watch what you label things. V1 equals zero for the cat, and the acceleration is one meter per second squared. So that's the information we have, but there's more that we can get from this diagram. The other thing we can point out here is the distance of the chicken equals the distance of the cat. That's going to be useful later on. So times are starting at zero. The time is the same for both. So that's another piece of information we can use there. All right, let's take a step forward to the next frame. <clears throat> these, two part, these two steps, finding the target and getting the concept and drawing a diagram, are crucial. If you don't do these, you're often going to run into problems later on. So please, try to get into the habit of doing both of them. Next step. So we've got drawing and getting the concept. We have the target. Now we're going to look at a formula. But before we do, here's, here's another way that sometimes students will tackle. Here was my first try. It didn't work. Here's my second try. <clears throat> if the chicken travels four meters each second, and the cat travels one meter per second for the first second, so it covers one meter, and then in the second second, it travels two meters per second, so it travels two meters. So that's another two meters, which means it adds two to its distance, so now it's gone three. And the chicken's gone eight after two seconds. After three seconds, the chicken's gone 12. The cat has gone an extra three, which means it's six. This is looking a little more likely. They might catch up here. You follow it through, and we get up to somewhere in the vicinity of 28 minutes. Now you can pause again. Try this method quickly on your own and see if you get the same answer. If not, see if you can figure out what I might have done wrong. <clears throat> okay, hopefully you've done that. If you haven't, pause and do it. Now, the next thing is to pause and see if you can follow the formula method that I, I provided you, the problem solving method that I provided you. Formula and then putting the equations together, the algebra, and solving for the numbers. Probably not. We probably we really haven't tackled it yet, although it is grade 10 math and you would have done it in grade 10. However, let's move forward. Pause it now, see if you can get it. If not, keep going. So here we go. Formula is the next step. We know that you, actually, the next step would be given information, which we covered in step two. So I'm just going to call this step three. The formula. We know the chicken's speed. We know the acceleration of the cat. We know the initial speed of the cat, which is zero. We need the chicken or the cat's distance. We can solve for either one. They are the same. We know the times are equal. We know the distances are equal. So there's the given information. What information do we have? Well, you guys know this formula. Distance equals speed times time. You've seen that before. <clears throat> if you haven't seen this formula in a, about a week and a half, you will. This formula is a formula for when an object is accelerating constantly. So this is the initial speed times the time, plus half times the acceleration times the time squared. We also know this, that the two distances are the same, and we know that the two times are the same. When we take this information, we can actually plug these formulas together to get rid of what we don't know and keep what we want. So don't worry about if you're not, not following this right now but I'm going to show you how I would do it. So we'll take these two bits of information, we'll move to the next page, and I'll quickly solve the problem. So the distance of the constantly accelerating object, the cat, we 
just like that. That's an A. The distance that the chicken has traveled looks like that. That's constant speed. So this is constant acceleration, changing speed. This is constant speed. <clears throat> now we've agreed that time, the two times are equal. So this time and this time and this time, those are equal numbers. We've also agreed that the distances are equal numbers. We're solving for the distance. So we have to keep that in the equation. We know the initial speed is zero. So zero times anything is going to give us zero. So this term here is going to disappear. We know the acceleration and we know the speed of the chicken. So that last thing we need to do is we need to put these two equations together in a way that makes t disappear but keeps d, because d is the unknown we're trying to solve for. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> there are several things we can do, but I'm going to just do a replacement method here. I'm going to solve this one here for t. If you rearrange the formula, this is what it looks like. Time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. And I'm going to take that time and I'm going to plug it in for the time in this equation. I don't need to do this one because I've already canceled that term out. So here's what that'll look like. Distance equals one half a distance over speed squared. Now when I open that out a little bit and expand it, one half a d squared over v squared because everything inside this bracket gets squared. And then I can do some rearranging. So I'm going to have d equals, let's, uh, let's bring the distances together on one side. Actually, let's, let's not do this. Can you see how to rearrange this? If you can, pause it, give it a try. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring these two terms and this term over to this side. And I'm going to bring this one over here. So, to take the half, I can multiply both sides by 2, and I get 2d. To bring the acceleration, I have to divide by a on both sides. And to bring the v squared, which is on the bottom, is dividing, I have to multiply. And then to get rid of that d, I have to divide both sides by d. So what I'm going to wind up with is this, 2v squared over a equals d squared over d. If you didn't catch that, pause it and look at the math and see if you can do that yourself. If not, we can talk about it in class. Don't worry, we'll get there anyway. But we're left with 2v squared over a equals d. Now, step six is to plug the numbers in. Distance equals 2v is 4 squared over A, which is 1, and that gives us 32 meters. So neither of my previous answers were correct. This is the correct answer. The last thing you do is you go back, let's go back now, to where you wrote what your answer should look like. It's two significant digits, so I'm going to put two digits in my answer. Now I'm done. So now, pause the video, stop the video, and try this one again yourself and see if you can do that that way. If not, don't worry, we will get to it. But that is how the problem-solving method works. Good luck.